Hi, it's Colleen Schmidt bringing you a part two for our horary astrology. So we're going to continue working today with Barbara Waters. I decided that on each one of these little snippets that I do, I'm going to utilize only one book. It was okay for the first lecture because it kind of emphasized the difference between the two. But I think for our purposes, we're going to stick with one. And as I do, maybe uh, part three, I'll work from Karen, Karen's book. Okay, so we're going to use Barbara's book. I'm going to use their first names. It just makes it easier for me. Today, before I begin, I want to say, first of all, thank you for being here. And I want to say that I am pleasantly surprised by the amount of people who have been viewing these, what I like to refer to as pure astrology uh, videos. And wow, that just, that's exactly what I want to do. I want to do pure astrology. So thank you all for viewing these videos, for the likes. And if you will, share and comment. I do love hearing from you. But I do want to just put out a little gratitude. I have been blown away by the reception, if you will, of these videos. I really didn't know if anyone would want to see them. They are, after all, more like hardcore astrology. So thank you. Well, with that said, I want to start talking about our objective for the day. There are two places that I am going to really concentrate on today, okay? Last time in part one, I really concentrated on the planets themselves and what they, uh, what their elements were. Uh, we got, we touched a little bit on what each planet kind of brings to the table. Today, we're going to be looking at significators, okay? One of the most important aspects of horary astrology is how you ask your questions. And once the question is asked, it's like reading cards. You would then look to your significator of that reading. And the significator does depend on what you're reading, okay? So we're going to concentrate a little bit on that. I'm going to start with that. The, th the second thing I want to concentrate on today is what they refer to as the newer planets. And to all of us, they're all relatively old. But there, there is a whole set of newer planets, which would be Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. So one of the things that Barbara Waters talks about, and I did touch on this last time, is the fact that outer planets can give more clarification. I believe that Karen is going to, um, Zontag, Zontag, if I'm saying her name right, is going to uh, have maybe a little bit of a difference. This is where I thought she was more expanded. However, I was really surprised that when I got to a certain place in her book, she did talk about, Barbara Waters did, that they represent those things that are beyond the querents. By the word, the word querent is the person who's asking the question, their control. Well, yeah, because in a natal chart, those things are considered generational. And whenever you're coming into like a Pluto transit or a Uranus transit or a Neptune transit, they're not usually internal. They are from external forces. So I could totally 100% get behind this as a humanistic, more modern astrologer. One of the things that she points out, and this is really important because when we get into the next section and I start talking about houses, which I started preparing, but houses are actually really, really important. So I'm going to save them for a separate lecture. Okay. The, what happens is, is that the, whenever you're working with astrology, but this is true of anything in astrology, you really can't put a judgment on it because Horary is not giving you a judgment. It's only simply stating event facts. It's like listing a bunch of facts about something. It's not giving an opinion one way or the other, but it's literally looking at, well, this is what's going on, you know, kind of keeping it really concise that way. So the, the um, if you're looking for something to find out whether it's ethically right or wrong, you're going to be wasting your time because that's not how this 
works at all. But then again, I don't think any astrology does. So I, I do want to throw that on there from my own perspective. They describe what's going on. They do not evaluate it. And this the same can be said when you're doing natal astrology, but with the exception that when you're doing natal astrology, there's more an acceptance of the higher energies versus the lower energies of any sign. And then the counselor, the person, the astrologer, whoever it is, would then encourage what we would like to refer to as the high road. Okay? I, I think it won't be bad, but we have some street noise going on, and a lot of times that's when I'll move to a, a different room in the building. Um, so for now, I think we're going to be okay. The um, Basically, uh, the sign is the information about the condition. Well, it's also our significator. Well, the sign is, I'm sorry, the planets are more about the significators. The sign is itself the sign which is what we talked about in part one is a lot of information about the condition of the event or whatever it is you're looking at the house would then describe the circumstances and we will be letting that go for the next video but as always you have to eliminate what is irrelevant. Now, again, when you're doing counseling astrology, you're going to talk about everything in every way that you can because throughout, whether it's a solar return or a lunar return throughout that month, throughout that year, you're going to see it every which way you can. But when it comes to horary, that's not going to be true. You're only going to use the interpretations that are related directly to the question that you're asking. Okay, and uh, you'll see this clearer as I get into my form here that we're going to go through on significators. Okay, so the sign, the house presents the circumstance, the sign provides the atmosphere, and then the planets are basically significators of, and you'll see they're the players. Okay, so um, qualified questions can come under the use of the new rule and one of the things she uses is that apparently somebody had come to her asking about an airline pilot position and then another case that she uses is a naval officer in each of those cases they were uh, able to use the new planet system because Uranus is going to answer any question regarding computers and the Navy is going to be answered through the energies of Neptune. Okay, so I'm hoping that you follow that and that too made sense to me and I thought definitely apropos for astrology because even in horary astrology we're going to have to use the outer planets from time to time because they're a part of our lives maybe back in the days in Egypt they didn't have big navies they didn't have computers well then it's understandable where there might be some discrepancies in that resist in that situation so the dia the horary chart itself features a diagram of the person being read, the querent, their awareness. And, and that's all you're ever going to get, okay? I always say that about cards, too. They're going to tell you things, but they can't really go outside of the realm of what you yourself can touch base with, okay? So there has to be some um, awareness in there. So always charts are set up for the uh, moment of the question. Like, for example, if, you're, if you've been offered a job and you want to find out about that job, it might be a good idea to note the time that the job was offered to you. And that can give you a lot of information, okay? So, um, this, so, and qualified questions, again, you know, might apply as they did in the examples that she gave us to the new rulers. Now, um, I want to point something out here, because in Karen's book, she talked about a such thing as a counseling chart or a chart, a consultation chart, okay? And 
it's interesting because, and, and I've heard of other astrologers do, I don't because I feel I should, but I don't because I'm, I'm already giving so much information to the client that I usually do not look at, like if my client sets up a, a consultation, that, that I would make a chart for that consultation. That's a good thing to do. I think it's a great way to also learn about astrology, but that's different than a horary chart. And I, I really wanted to point that out. That a horary chart is um, really much more, from what I gather, very concise to the regards of the time. Interestingly enough, you could set up a time for somebody to meet you, but you could be late, they could be late. There's a million things that could happen on a consultation chart. So a horary chart, you want to stick right to that absolute minute. But by the same token, if somebody offers you a job and you need to make a decision about that job, that would be a horary concept. You, does everyone understand? Because the chart of the job and you, the relationship between you and your job, was actually not going to be set till the first moment you begin your job. So I, I hope that I'm making sense with this because this is where astrology begins to get a little bit complicated. And we have play as astrologers, but if you follow closely to some of the rule sets, it's it's easier to start really structuring. And one of the things that I've noticed about astrologers, because we are studying cycles that we are as people generally very structured okay so as you develop your structure these are things to keep in mind okay so um i did talk about how um you know when that guy asked for a job for as a pilot too so uh neptune was rising in the chart and and he turned out that he he was a chemist who was going to working for the Navy. So things like that are aha moments, okay? And you definitely want to take that into consideration. So you would not, in the case of a chemist, want to go back to an to a, you know a different kind of a ruler system, okay? That if you saw Pisces at the head of that chart and they were asking about chemistry, I would hope that you would go ding 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 and know that Neptune is a big factor. Okay, um, so it's it's really important. The same thing with Aquarius on the um, airline job. I think Aquarius was actually on the sixth house cusp, and they were asking about a job, which was really interesting. Pay attention to those things because that's where you're going to get your definitive answers and a lot of your details. Like for example, when he asked the question, Aquarius was not at the ruling of the chart, just like the Neptune was, okay? So you had the Piscean rising in that chart, but then the Neptune, um, uh, that Neptune rising did apply, okay? But in the case, so that was a significator. That was actually saying, no, no, I use this for significator. Whereas in the example of the airline job, because sixth house, and we'll be getting to that eventually, represents your job, hmm, job, Uranus, job Aquarius, and then you got you got the right job, okay? So just a couple of things um, that we can play with and, and to kind of look at as examples. Um, when, in, when, when you use outer planets uh, as a significator, as in the case of the chemist, then you can be more neutral about how you look at them. Then they become neutral, okay? They're not... Because generally, at the old school, they would be considered, ah, you know, not such good news. As a matter of fact, all three of them in the old system would be coming under malefics rather than benefits, okay? So they're not considered good. But then again, we have to look at it from the perspective of, well, what was the question? So it always goes back to what was the question, okay? Um, I'm going to talk a lot more about the question, okay? But before I do, I want to, we're going to move to the significators, okay? Um, and I'm going to do that via the computer, okay? So bear with me here. I'm actually going to bring up um, that, and I'm going to make sure, hopefully you can see everything. 
Um, I wrote everything down. I It's my way of study, but it's also a way that I can give you a visual. And having been a teacher for a couple of decades, you know, in my lifetime, I, although it was dance, I always felt the necessity to teach on what they would call all uh, learning styles, which means auditory, kinesthetic, and visual, okay? And I think that it's really important to do that because that's how you don't leave people behind. So we're doing auditory. I'm trying to use examples to, to help those of us who are kinesthetic. But the best way to reach everybody is visual because 97% of the population is visual, at least even if it's not a dominant, but maybe they're secondary, okay? Little, um, little extra there. Now, I'm going to switch us Hopefully you don't have to look at my computer. And we're going to look at my computer face, okay? So bear with me here. Okay, so I should be on my document. Um, and I will check here. Okay, so we are now officially on the right page. So let me get to the top of it because everything kind of got messed up. Um, we're, we're looking at uh, how to use significators and that's what the, I'm going to call this piece of paper. I have my notes up here if we, you know, if I want to get off on a tangent, but I think it's pretty, if you understand one of the beauties of going through this horary, the way I've been, and believe me, I've been an astrologer for decades. <laughs> okay. Um, way decades, like longer than half my life at this point. So one of the things that I've been noticing is how much this like reaffirms all the classic information that I know, the old stuff, you know, the stuff that we do want to keep working with, that we that we really do want to keep fresh in our minds. OK, so I'm going to work. We'll start with the moon. And I'm going to have my own notes here and there's notes on the computer. But so for you to see so you can take notes if you'd like. But the moon is about function, okay? That's one of the things that it rules. So it rules function. And, and it, it gets a little easier as you go down the list because initially you're looking and you mean function, function, time, okay? So I'm just giving you the general here. Imagination, now it starts to gel right imagination fertility uh assimilation okay so think about the fact that the stomach is ruled by um this uh by the moon you know you think of uh food nourishment um all of that is related to the moon so that makes sense then looking glasses so this would be anything that's Tran, um, transient options like borrowed light, light that comes in windows, reflected glory, okay, or reflecting quality of the moon. So it's when anything comes off of something else, okay, um, I think that that's when you want to look at the moon. You know, so-and-so, my boss just got put into the special committee and then the question would be, am I going to be chosen for the committee? Well, that would be a reflection because they weren't the one chosen, the, somebody else was. But that's what they mean by that reflecting, that reflecting quality. Mother, wife, and female children. Dependence. Think of the word dependence. Okay. Um, I also want to state this for the record before we get too deep in this. I find, and the Barbara Waters book is a little bit not very different, okay, that some of this material is really antiquated in its thinking. And I know that astrology comes from very old roots. I get that. But I, I sometimes really don't like the fact that women are not considered at the same place that the sun is, and it, and it or the men are. And I... And, and, so it's kind of interesting because even though it's a wife, mother, and a female child, when you're looking, when the quiet, the querent comes to you and asks the question, um, if it were a man 
then it could be these things. But if it would be a woman, it might be concerning the question. Is, are you following that? Okay. So, you know, I don't think she's too bad. I don't think she's a chauvinist or a, or a masochist or anything. But I do feel that just because of the old quality of astrology and that it was, it has, at least in the last 2,000 years plus, lived in what I like to refer to as the patriarchal system. Remember, prior to the patriarchal system, there was a matriarchal system. Don't know if they used astrology, though. But for mm, several thousand years now, women have not um, been bestowed that much. So I just, I want to stress that. I, I'm an advocate for women, so of course, that kind of turns my stomach. But that's a whole other thing. So under wife, mother, and female, ch um, and female children, especially younger ones, servants. See what I mean about this? Yeah. Servants are seen through the moon. Anything commonplace. So, again, we don't have servants, most of us. So, uh, okay, that's all I'm going to say. Um, anything commonplace, you know, matter of fact, embryos, uh, the missing person, animal or thing, you know, when something isn't known, when it isn't there, think of the moon as hidden, too, you know, because of that concept. And the silver pearls and many precious stones are also associated with this moon. Okay? I don't know why all that's in there. I don't know that people would be asking significators about stones, but I don't I don't I don't know that. I mean, I work with stones. I never thought of it that way, but, you know. So, we're going to look at the sun, which is the shortest and the easiest. It's your physical body, so it's your vitality. It's your heart, it's the heart. It's also what drives you. The father, the husband, the lover, males. Any male in a position of authority, such as employers or bosses, can be seen uh, through the sun, okay? So if you're, again, asking about a boss and you're the reflective energy, you would be moon to the sun. Uh, so that makes some sense to me. So that's all she writes about the sun. <laughs> okay, so moving on. None of the others are that short. Warning. Mercury is about communication. So here we go again with what is logical? <laughs> Mercury is communication. We already know that. So go back to your classics. It's logic because of the gathering information. Documents, messengers and couriers, inventors, commuters, and the vehicles they use. Okay, so if you think, this is all Mercury. Think about Mercury, it's uh, what it represents, Hermes, it represents the trickster sometimes, the pickpocket and forgers, I like that, the thief, the hands, the arms, the intestinal tract, it's the, it's the mover, it's the, it's, the, it's the commuting, okay, but the commuting is even happening in your own body. Um, it represents merchants and traders, uh, so I'm hoping that you're make, this all makes sense to you. In mundane charts, Mercury rules children, young people, messengers, news medias, and all gadgets related to daily use. Well, I, I want to go like this, computers, telephones. Um, in our day, which is not even Barbara Waters' day, our communication uh, abilities have are off the chart now by comparison. So your Zooms, your, so it might even get varied down because now with some of the software like Zoom, I just shot myself there with that one, could we be crossing into the areas of te Neptune? So it gets really complicated. Oh, that's right, because our lives in some ways are now more complicated. I actually read something in an inspirational thing today about the more things you have the wearier life is. Oh boy, is that true? As it took me almost two hours to even start this video because I was having printer problems of all things. So, da 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 da! Mercury. Okay, so does it make our lives better? Mm, I don't think so. Anyway, as a rule, now I'm going to break these rulers up here for this next little section, okay? So, as a ruler of Virgo, which is where we're going to start, it is, so it's different than when it's the ruler of Gemini, 
okay? So Gemini might relate to a lot of the stuff, but Virgo is going to incorporate a few more things like armed forces, okay? Because they're civil service, because they're, they're doing a, a service to us. Service is always equated with the energy of Virgo. So libraries, and I already said computers. The diet and food supply is more closely associated with Virgo than it is Gemini. Okay, because they have more, more attention is paid there at that point. So that brings us to Venus. We're going to deal with double rulers here too. So in Venus, we see things like sweethearts and, and or mistresses. Uh, it's, it's Venus, right? Social relations, partners, except for did you notice that this is sweethearts or mistresses, but lovers were actually under the sun. Make a note of that, and if you are somebody who's thinking of dabbling, I, I might myself, as I get through this whole series, I'm first going to do these lectures, and then I'll think about that. But I play with that because, you know, as a natal counseling, predictive astrologer, uh, Venus can be lovers of both sexes. But this is an old and classic system. So perhaps in this particular case, we might uh, be looking at sun being lovers and sweethearts, as they refer to as Venus. Social relations, obviously, because Venus is social. But then again, so is Mercury. So, uh, uh, okay. But they call Venus social relations because they're thinking about theater. They're thinking about entertainment. Uh, they're thinking about culture in that respect and and then that would be more venus it's referring to partnerships of all kinds marriages in particular contracts legal or social arts and handcrafts and this is where we get into that whole thing because venus is art young women that was a dumb moment money obviously jewelry and valuable artifacts now this is really interesting because venus would then be and they didn't say this, but would Venus be stones that are worth more money, whereas semi-precious would come under the moon? This is where I'd like to experiment, because I am somebody who works particularly with semi-precious. So then it talks about uh, copper and bronze and things that are made from them. Purses, safes, and safe deposit boxes, because they contain money. People working in decorative arts, craftsmen of all kinds. The kidneys and the lower back, because that's the part of the body where you're going to find Venus things, such as the, um, and they're going to get to that, but Venus can also be related to, um, I guess that is just, it is just Venus, but it also has to do with the blood. So that's a whole other thing, and, you know, perhaps at this some point I will do a video on medical and uh, go through some of the basics of medical because again I'm, I'm so pleased to see that so many people are really interested in pure astrology that uh, makes me ambitious to do a lot more the neck and the throat because you have your singers and your and the and the, it's the sound because you know here again mercury so th this is where mercury and venus are doing a little dance okay adversely connected with the sign of scorpio yeah uh, or its rulers venus can then indicate venereal disease okay and again it depends on what you're reading this is not true if you're reading a uh natal chart of somebody okay i mean not that you not that there wouldn't be something in there or something to watch per the solar progressed or you know it's something you could see in the lunar ret uh, solar return but um i wouldn't necessarily go that far adversely connected okay so its color is uh azure blue or pastel hues of course it's that pretty pretty stuff because it's venus now uh, Venus, that's mostly as Taurus. So here we go with, you know, I love when they break these down even more, okay? So Venus, when it is in or as a ruler of Libra, then is more about peace and treaties and allies and 
Libra is uh, really associated with the law. Okay, the whole concept of fair. Public streets, museums. And it's interesting because when you're commuting in a vehicle, or you're commuting, that's not Venus, that's Mercury. But I guess the street itself is considered the Venus. Museums, that's a no-brainer, the art. When it's badly afflicted, it can relate to war. Civil strife, enemies of the state, now, Venus as ruler of Taurus, okay, so this is different. Like I said, it gets a little, little bit different here. Banks, the stock exchange. Do you see the differences already? Like one is museums and art, and the next one is money, uh, commodities, the cattle markets, cattle ranches, resources in the hands of people. That's Taurus, okay? And the cattle industry... They don't talk about it as much anymore. It was huge in politics. It probably still is. Um, where the people that own the big cattle ranchers are also very affluent people and people that tend to make policy. So don't underestimate the whole cattle ranch, cattle market thing. I happen to be listening to some lectures by Heather Cox Richardson. And one of the things she talks about is the cattle ranchers. So, you know, it, it, that is resources in the hands of people. That is people outside of the government that have money. When badly aspected by Pluto, Uranus, or Neptune, recognizing these are the outer planets, then um, it can be things like plagues, epidemics, and especially influenza, okay? Um, by Saturn, it can indicate corruption in the courts, poverty among the people, and it can also, um, yeah. So it, it, we're going to do a whole thing on Saturn. So I'm going to leave that, go toward the end, actually, because I'm going to jump through these because we're spending a lot of time. I don't even know if I'll get, I may end up doing the newer planets on the next video, so we'll see how far I get, which is why I didn't really write anything yet. So we're looking at Mars as our next energy, and Mars is about, and you can see it, initiative, uh, energy, the male sex drive, so the head, the brain, the sex organs, um, Mars, okay? Accidents, particularly those that result to bleeding, um, the head accidents, especially, uh, that's even true in natal. Soldiers, obviously, Aries, the, uh, is, you know, there's a, a the, what ruled it, and it's a god of war. Uh, weapons, here we go again. Uh, pioneers, though, engineers, people that are, that go off, you know, that are not freakish or fragile to go out on their own, you know, those with the... Uh, real um, courage, I guess I want to say. Weapons, especially those carried by hand that it can inflict cuts or wounds, such as knives, guns, and swords. Strife, dissension, and arguments. Warlike games. Contests, contests of athletic prowess. Apparently, I can't spell. Hunters. Okay. Uh, we have um, sheep, lambs, or those that raise them. So again, um, with with Mars, for some reason, it's uh, lambs. And I'm not quite sure why that is. That I don't get at all. I, I don't understand that. If I were, if she were alive today, I'd write her an email and question that. I don't understand. The process of elimination, especially by death or violence, fevers, those things, yes. But in the new rulers, Pluto would be death. Violence would still be Mars. But again, you got to stay with the old in this stuff. That's why we're going through it. Surgeons and surgeries. Yeah, because that that trauma to the body, um, speaking as somebody who had, who's had and had just gone through one of those recently. Um, yeah, they, they're a trauma for the whole body. If, if afflicted through Venus, it indicates venereal disease. So again, Mars and Venus, it can be... And its colors are red and purple. Yeah, it's a root chakra, so I always think of red. It rules iron, steel, and all things metal. It is Mars. In mundane charts, Mars, the ruler, signifies war, violence, crime, soldiers in combat, the steel industry itself, arsenals, colonizing new territory. Yeah, because how do you do that? But by being aggressive, right? I mean, some of it makes 
absolute sense. As a ruler of Scorpio, so remember that if you're going by the new rulers, if we're working by that, then you're doing things uh, like it signifies death, carnage, crime waves, taxes. But you see how it goes to death right away in Scorpio. You see that. It's important to note that. Because Scorpio is now ruled by Pluto. So some of the Scorpion attributes are still there. The nation's intelligence services, yeah, Scorpio. They ferret out any kind of information. Police and vice squads, homicide divisions, detectives, torture chambers or camps. Organized crime and the resources of a nation's allies or enemies. Yeah, because that's really important, right? So we go to something a little lighter. So we look at Jupiter, which represents expansion, luck, prizes, awards, gambling and gamblers, horse racing and horse tracks, race tracks, racing stables, because it's all a part of gambling, you say. It's all Jupiter. It's also because they travel to do that and horses come from different places. Like you even write travel to foreign countries. Yeah. Foreigners and strangers meet uh, when one even meets them at home. It's still Jupiter. Yeah, because you're expanding your awareness by the simple meaning of that. Churches and clergymen because the affiliation to religion. Lawyers and judges because of its connection to the law and courts in particular. One's code of honor and ethics. Yeah. And hold on one second. So we're looking at, um, back at Jupiter, the problem is, is whenever I do anything on this computer, I've been having a lot of printer problems, thus the pop-up from my Dell printer. Um, basically, um, when you think of Jupiter, uh, it is legal stuff. Just, you know, I know we talked about that with Venus, but Venus is that fairness, that concept. Jupiter is a little bit more about the educational concepts the philosophy, so you see that, and the ethics, and the honor. Um, it's also, um, like I say, philosophers and philosophy, publishing, large wild animals, mountain and mountain climbers, okay, so because of that expansion, people of high status, great fame, or national importance, yeah, fame, expansion, and then it goes, if it's badly afflicted, Jupiter can indicate fame through crime, dishonor, lavish expenditures, if, if afflicted, extravagance or loss through speculation and gambling. I was going to get to that because, you know, Jupiter is the gambler, but I wouldn't gamble even in a natal astrology if you didn't have a good Jupiter. It really isn't uh, advisable, okay, because it does work that way even in natal. It says tins, tin mines, and articles made from tin. So tin is a Jupiter, probably because it's a really thin and you could spread it out. Expansion. The color is yellow, green, and aqua marine. Uh, the color, you know, and, and again, um, if you go by chakras, um, Jupiter's supposed to be the liver and the thighs and the buttocks, yet yellow and green are a little bit higher and aquamarine are higher up in the so i'm never quite sure where they come up with this when afflicted it can indicate disease in these areas yes an affliction to um jupiter can indicate liver issues that is a fact okay again just a little bit of medical astrology there we definitely use jupiter for the liver in um, mundane astrology, Jupiter rule. Jupiter rules. It's not Saturn. <laughs> Sagittarius. Wow, where was I when I wrote this? Okay, so if it rules Sagittarius, sorry about that. It's significant, sig and this makes sense to you. It will be. Uh, it will because Jupiter in this can also be a ruler of Pisces, and I think you can see that. A, by the colors, by the um, some of the things that it's talking about. Although, not really, because, not really. 
crime and dishonor, deception. Well, we'll get to that. There's a lot of deception. When I get to the newer planets, boy, that's all of Neptune's terrain. But Neptune is what rules Pisces. So here we go. Okay, so there's always that crossover effect. So looking at it in Sagittarius, it's foreign service, the nobility, makes sense, the nation's highest courts, universities, churches, the clergy, counselors to the king or president, foreign relations or foreign countries, the culture, moral traditions of the nation, the honor of a country. That all makes sense because that's all Sagittarius, but as a ruler of Pisces, now you have things like hospitals, penal institutions, you know, our prisons, monasteries, secret negotiations, secret enemies, espionage, spying, naval strength. You catch that. Naval strength. I need I really want to emphasize that in light of my little talk earlier. Charitable institutions. It's a twelfth house. Okay? Think Pisces, think twelfth. And, and a lot of this makes a lot of sense, okay? In mundane um, charts, it involves war um, if Jupiter's placement is indicated. In other words, in, if there's a war in a Jupiter chart, and Jupiter will tell you which side will be victorious, okay? And that is, I've heard that before. Jupiter is also present in death charts. However, you don't do horary for death because it won't give you that answer. Saturn, limitation, frustration, it's all going to sound familiar, want, lack, hardship, privation, boundaries, the outer limits. Now, it's interesting because when they mean outer limits, they're like talking skin on the body. They're talking not outer structures. That would be the territory of Uranus. Just want to put that out there so we don't get confused. Loss real estate. Lost because of separation. Okay, so I just want to throw that in. Because separation is definitely a word affiliated with. Real estate, foundations, particularly of buildings, anything, our skull, our, our skull, our bone structure rather, is a part of. Uh, skeleton of the body. Okay, so I like that because if you think of what a building is, it's, it's like a, it's a shell that holds things and that's what it is. It can represent the foundation of a state, the foundation of a family, the foundation of a great financial reserve. So just knowing that anything where you have a foundation set that sets its basic structure, that would be considered the rule of Saturn. And if you're asking a question, Saturn becomes then the significator. The teeth. Oh, let's not talk to me about those right now. <laughs> I must be going through a Saturn transit. Actually, I am, but that's a whole other thing. Um, the uh, amor, armor, armor, armor. Okay, yeah, outer limit, right? The skin as the boundary or the outer limit of the skin. I already talked about that. What binds you is also Saturn. Um, I can tell you that in astrology, there are Saturn aspects that will bind people together and that they won't separate, okay? So there are interesting things like that. Ropes, chains, cords, though, come under this. Whatever smothers would be like feathers and blankets. Again, it's that anything restricts strangulation, choking, falls either from physical or from power. When Nixon fell, and I know many people are young who watch this, but when Nixon fell, it was a Saturn issue. So I remember that distinctly because I was at the very beginning. I was very, very young. Don't get me wrong. But I was already studying astrology. So I want to throw that in there. Um, Saturn in the proper context, however, and I do want to put this out, could become a significator, uh, uh, but it could become a significator, but it's also, um, I wonder why I don't have, uh, this is an ad. I don't know why this is here. It, it that, I just want to put that in that it could become a significator. Okay. Sometimes when I write these, and it's after I've already written them in my notes, so sometimes I think that that reason why it happens is because I'm tired. I've already written, and I think I know what I'm doing, and I don't. Paranoia is another, that's a Saturn thing. But paranoia, you know, is a real isolator. Extreme cold, yeah, and then whatever protects us from the cold, because there it is, our outer layer. 
the metal lead and things made of it. That is always true. I've heard that since I started studying astrology. The color black and all the hues that shade into black. Corporations. The executive, the chief executive. So the chairman of the board, the father, and mundane work, the administrator. Okay. Fathers, yes, in charts. We see the parent often as Saturn. The discipline and those who enforce it. So that kind of makes sense when you think of it in terms of a parent or a boss or employer. It's whoever enforces it. So the father association with a judge in a courtroom or a warden in a prison. Okay. Funerals and all that pertains to them because it's a loss. It, they're leaving you. They're moving on. You're still staying. So you're that all relates to Saturn, okay? They go to the better place, Jupiter. You get to stay here and be Saturn. That's, if you look at charts, really does exactly what they're telling you. Cemeteries and coffins, obviously part of funerals. India and its people, that's which I thought was interesting, are ruled by Saturn. I didn't know that. Coal, coal mines and miners. I think it's that black again, um, but also the fact that coal is a resource used, like lead and metals that they talk about, um, but coal is used as a resource, so it has other, other factions. Carbon, and this is where they put diamonds, which I thought was really interesting. Okay, Again, these are things I want to play with because really, I don't agree with everything in cards, and I was able to, through the decades, figure out my way. Um, I, it's really interesting on this. I would question some things. Very old people or, or things. Yeah, I believe that. Okay. It's not easy to be old. Speaking as an old person. <laughs> Puritans. Uh, Puritanism. Goats. I don't understand the animals sometimes. Blunt instruments such as hammer, cuddles, gloves, clubs. All of those things are, uh, they're used to, uh, well, if you think about what a hammer is used for, it's to build structure. Your karma, well, if everything's discipline, uh, and also if you think of uh, Saturn as a teacher or a taskmaster, well, then, of course, reward or punishment due to one's merits or misdeeds. Time itself. And the idea of weight and weighing machines, anything that's excessively heavy. So let me come back now. So let's see. So I'm back. I am going to leave it there because the newer, this was a six page of note go through. This is a five page of note go through. So um, I'm going to break this up. And that way it's easier for you to digest and it's easier for me to get to you. So I'm going to, at this point, say thank you. They're starting up their stuff out there anyway. Thank you for being here. And I want to wish you all, as I do always, happy readings.